I'm Mark Jarvis, I'm Managing Director of Multi Hull World and I'm here in Barcelona today to test the latest Ultimate Performance Cruiser from Seawind, the 52 foot Seawind 1600. the Seawind 1600 is particularly good because you have everything immediately to hand and you have fantastic visibility forward and you have complete connection with the rest of the crew on board the boat and if you do want to change sides because you want to dock against the other side then the, the port side helm position gives you that opportunity with its electronic engine controls you can do it very easily. A particularly clever feature on the Seawind 1600 is this central electric winch with all of the halyards, reefing lines, all coming straight here from the mast. It means that all the ropes that come from the mast aren't a trip hazard around the boat and it's very easy to set and douse the mainsail from here. When you connect that to the two sheet lines and two sheet winches that are to left and right of me, then handling the mainsail with this boat from the safety of the cockpit is very easy. Cruising boats are not only about sailing, they're also about enjoying time spent at that beautiful anchorage that you've just reached. And on this, on this boat, you have this great, comfortable outside seating space, and you have this immediate access through to the saloon with the ventilation through from the saloon keeping the whole area nice and cool. As you can see this is a very sheltered position to be able to helm the boat for long distances and a nice little feature that comes with this 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 boat is full of these little features but in this example where you can rest your feet on this little bar or stand up when the bar is put away is an excellent feature for a cruising boat. On any cruising boat power and water are fundamentally important to your ability to be independent and on the Seawind 1600 this is dealt with particularly well. You can see we have an enormous opportunity to put an array of solar panels providing enough power to keep the boat and its crew perfectly happy no matter what they're doing with their Game Boy or their equipment on board and similarly the clever gutter arrangement around this bimini top funnels the rainwater into those holes at the back of each end of the bimini down dedicated tubes inside the bimini structure to hose fittings to allow you to divert the water directly into the tanks uh, or to wash the decks depending on what you want to do with it. The, the tanks on the boat themselves there are three individual water tanks two large water tanks positioned in the boat to re reduce the pitching moment um, and a third tank which is a dedicated freshwater tank with a manual pump at the galley to, a, to give you fresh water, clean fresh water for drinking. Like most performance multi-hulls the Seawind 1600 has a square top mainsail which is very powerful. To be able to control that power the, this system uses two independent sheet tackles, a leeward and a windward, and those run to these two winches. This system gives absolute control over the mainsail shape, much better than a solution using a, a traveller would do, and allowing the, the helmsman, the skipper, to get exactly the shape that he wants out of the mainsail. The fall from each of these sheets then disappears into this very clever rope box at the back of the boat along with the halyards and the reefing lines from the electric centre winch. And when they're all parked out the way, neat and tidy, it makes a very nice forward facing seat. Running fast downwind, it's always an issue of the, the accidental jibe 
on a fast boat and on this boat this is dealt with by control of the dagger boards on the Seawind 1600 is achieved by simply rotating this captive winch and to lift it moving the captive winch into the second position and rotating it in the other direction. This means that you don't have to go forward on the boat to lower the, the dagger boards manually and the windage from the dagger boards when they're up is completely missing because the, the dagger boards are kept below the deck of the boat. Below the clever transom step on the boat is this opening hatch which gives access to the cassette type rudders. The rudders can easily be lifted by removing this pin at which point you can take them right up or out indeed to, if they were to be damaged for repair but move them up so that you can take the ground quite confidently with the bottom of the boat. Also on the, on the rudder you can see this fitting which is for an emergency tiller. The engines on the boat are loco located ahead of the rudder for better manoeuvrability and weight positioning. The lid is supported by a gas strut and climbing down into the engine bay for maintenance is very easy. All of the filters, seals and uh, maintenance is all done right here. Easy access to the fuel filter, easy access to the water levels and easy access to the uh, cooling water strainer. Also in this space, on this boat, is mounted the water maker and the access to the steering gear is also made in this compartment. At the base of the mast are two large storage lockers. In those lockers are the diesel fuel tanks uh, and in this particular boat is the uh, generator for the air conditioning. This is an 8 kVA generator and as you can see it only takes up about half of the space in this one locker. So these are big lockers. Between the two large four deck lockers is the anchor locker. In the anchor locker is 80 meters of 10 millimeter chain together with the windlass and the chain bridle. The bridle system is attached to the chain here and then set as you back up off of the anchor. Very easy, very controllable here. Everything is right to hand that you might need if you're going to anchor this boat. One of the issues that many cruising sailors have with trampoline boats is going forward to access the winches or the furling gear or the reacher uh, across the trampoline. On this boat it has a structural longer on which supports the uh, forward load of the mast, the foresail, the asymmetric and the cruising chute so that you can all of that load is supported within the structure of the boat and it also gives you an easy walk forward to the base of the jib. On any genuine sailor's boat a choice of sails to use depending on the conditions is really important and on the Seawind 1600 this solution is put in place really well. So we have the conventional self-tacking jib set here on a furler, structurally onto the longer on and with good clearance around it so that the sail isn't going to get snagged on any of the wires. Forward of that we have a fixed position for the code zero. The code zero is set at a height that it again doesn't conflict with any of the uh, any of the structure around the, around the bottom of the sail and then beyond that is a retractable bowsprit for flying an asymmetric spinnaker. So all in all very easily put in place, very easy to use, a 
combination of sail plans and sail sets to suit even the most discerning of sailors. The sailing side of any performance cruiser is only one half of the story. The other half, of course, is what you do when you stop at that beautiful anchorage that you've just sailed to. And here, inside the Seawind 1600, you have a great relaxing space. One of the many features is this slide-out table, folding top, so you have enough room around the table to seat all of your guests on board. But in addition to that, the table lowers down to make a really comfortable day bed uh, for either additional people on board or just to relax and watch the 32 inch television that's installed on this boat. But most cruising catamarans don't really need a chart table area anymore. Most of the navigation is done electronically. However, on this boat, it has a fantastic forward facing watch keeping station. You have all of the equipment, plotters, electronics controls that you could possibly need to keep a, a view of what's happening on the boat, and yet a fantastic view forward below the level of the foot of the jib. So when you're on passage and the weather isn't quite as nice as it might be, you have a great place to be able to keep watch and to be able to control the boat. The window vision upwards as well as forward together with the hatches and the port lights means that you can also keep a good view on the sails and how the sail trim is. As we all know, all the action at a party always happens in the kitchen. And this kitchen has enough room for a really big party. Inside the Corium work surfaces, we have a full-size chest freezer, we have additional fridge, we have a built-in uh, microwave and oven, and a three-burner hob. So whether you're alongside the quay, as we are at the moment, or whether you're on passage, the ability to be able to produce good meals and keep the crew happy uh, is clearly quite possible in a galley like this. This is the standard layout for the Seawind 1600. The owner's cabin to starboard has a semi-island bed at the back of it, uh, a, a dressing area amidships and then a large heads and separate shower stall, uh, all producing an extremely enjoyable environment for the owner to spend time on board. For his guests on the port side is a double cabin aft which can either be a double bed or by removing the centre section can be two separate singles, an amidships heads and shower and a further double cabin ahead of the shower. So all in all enough room for the owner and for friends to enjoy spending time on board the boat. The Reichel Pew hull design on the boat with only a limited amount of rocker for and aft and uh, a broadening chine just above the waterline to allow more shoulder room in each hull seems to work very well uh, in our sail tests today. The centering of the weight in the middle of the boat uh, helps to reduce the pitching and therefore improve the overall performance. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us today on the Seawind 1600 Ultimate Performance Cruiser.